We would like to finish off this little mini unit on torque by talking about the center of mass or the center of gravity as sometimes people will refer to it. So if you take a look, we have a meter stick and I put my support at that location. Is it balanced? Will it rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? There are no masses on the meter stick, it's just the meter stick itself with the support placed where shown. Hopefully you guys realize that this will not be balanced, that this side has more mass and a greater distance, and this thing will rotate clockwise. If instead I had put the balancing point right at the 50, now we'd have equal amounts of mass and distance on both sides, and this thing would be balanced. So now I have a support right in the center. It's a hammer, and I put my support right in the middle so I have equal distance on both sides, so I guess this thing is balanced. And hopefully you realize it's not balanced. We got more mass out on this end, so this would create more torque, and this thing would torque counterclockwise, okay? So this time, our balancing point should not be at the center of the object but it should be placed much closer to the head of the hammer. Where do we need to put it? We need to find that spot where the torque from this side going clockwise and the torque from this side going counterclockwise are perfectly balanced. Because this side has more mass, this side needs more distance. There will only be one spot where I can put this where it will be perfectly balanced Okay, and that's where the torques clockwise and counterclockwise cancel out. Those spots where you can put your balancing point and get it to be stable are called your center of mass or your center of gravity. So for the meter stick, your center of gravity is right in the middle. And if you put your balancing point there, the meter stick would be balanced. The reason is you can think of gravity acting at that center of gravity and you can see it's going right through the pivot point so therefore there is no torque clockwise or counterclockwise. Now realize there really is a gravity on one side and a gravity on the other but since the torques cancel out we could just draw it right at what we're, we'll call the center of mass or the center of gravity. With this one our center of gravity would be here. So when you draw your gravity in, hopefully you could see that it would rotate um, counterclockwise. If we put our support right here, it would be balanced because again, gravity is going right through the support. So the idea is anytime you put your support directly in line with the center of gravity, the object will be balanced. For something like a golf club, we don't want to go to the middle. This side is much heavier, so we kind of want to feel our way along and find the spot where it is the center of gravity and the torques cancel out. There's a quick, easy way of finding the center of gravity. You put your fingers on each end so that the center of gravity is trapped somewhere in between and then you start moving your fingers closer together. You'll notice that the meter stick will shift around in such a way to keep the center of gravity right between your fingers. The center of gravity is always right between your fingers, so it's somewhere between these two locations. And where my finger meets, that should be the center of gravity, and they met right at the 50. With the golf club, when I try to move my fingers, You'll notice that only this one doesn't move. If I try to move this other one, the golf club moves with it. Okay, if I try to move this one, it works fine. But there will come a point where this finger will stop and this one starts to move. Again, the center of mass is somewhere in between. You just go real slow, real slow. You have no control over this. You will always meet up with the center of mass right between your two fingers and it will be balanced for you.
Okay, so a quick, easy way of finding your center of mass. Okay, so now we want to know, are things balanced? So if we take a look at these two Snapple cans, these cans are balanced. By having just the right amount of liquid inside of these, you can get your center of mass somewhere right above this support, and this thing will be balanced. If there's too much Snapple, it'll torque over um, clockwise, and if your center of mass was over here, it would torque back and stand itself back up again. But if you can get the center of mass, the center of gravity right above your support, you can get that thing to balance. So balancing happens when your uh, support is in line with the center of gravity. like that bookcase topple over and it's all got to do with our balancing point and our center of gravity. So if you take a look, I've got a box here marked off with an X at the center of gravity and we're going to just tilt it a little bit and we want to know would this topple over and hopefully you see that you're drawing gravity at the center of gravity, there's your pivot point. I hope you can see it. This thing would torque back counterclockwise and stand itself straight up again. If I tilt it a little more, draw it straight down, mark my pivot point, you can see that even this will stand itself back up again. This one right here will be balanced. It's right in line with the support. It will be precarious. That is, a little bit of movement one way or the other is going to get this thing to topple either clockwise or counterclockwise. And once we hit this point, we have passed the point of no return. I hope you can see now that the center of gravity will topple this thing over. If we find a way to lower the center of gravity, then even at this extreme angle, it would stand itself back up again. So whenever you have a piece of furniture, it's always a good idea to get your center of gravity as low as possible. With Bart standing so high up, that if he moved the center of gravity to this location, even a tiny little angle is gonna cause this thing to topple over. Okay, so toppling all has to do with the center of gravity and where it's located relative to your balancing point. This is why it's very dangerous to try uh, shaking a vending machine. Okay, a vending machine might have a pretty high center of gravity and toppling it or tilting it just a little bit could cause it to fall over on you, so you wanna be careful. Same thing with basketball nets. The basketball net of its own device is gonna have a really high center of gravity. So it's important to put a lot of mass down low to help move the center of gravity to a lower location lined up with that base of support. So for instance, this one, where the center of gravity is naturally in this location with this bottom part empty, this would topple over on top of the person playing basketball. Just a slight angle causes it to topple. By adding mass to the bottom, you lower the center of gravity, and now I hope you can see that the same angle causes it to stand itself back up again. Okay, even at this extreme angle, if we can get the center of gravity low enough, we can get this thing to pop back up. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Okay, and that is not what you want to happen. All right? So let me show you a few more examples of center of gravity and balancing. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do here is lift up this desk using a suction cup. And if I put the suction cup right here on the desk and clamp it down and try to lift, you'll see that the desk does not come up smoothly but starts rotating out of my control. If I move this over to the center and try again, you can see again how I'm only lifting up the front of the desk. If I want to lift the desk up smoothly and straight, I want to get to the center of mass. I'll try the middle of the desk. That doesn't work. I'll come closer to the end point. And you'll see I'm closer, but not quite level. The problem is if I come down here and try to lift, Now the center of mass is, tor mass is on this side, so it's torquing the other way. It's impossible for me to lift this desk straight up because the center of mass is somewhere halfway off of this um, end point. However, I can add mass to the desk using a couple of books and move the center of mass a little bit in this direction. And now hopefully when I lift, you can see it came straight and stays level. So this uh, support does not have to be underneath the center of mass. It could also be above the center of mass. It just has to be lined up. This next one I'd like you to see is a little toy bird where they designed him to have the center of mass right at his beak. So this bird will be perfectly balanced if we put a support in line with the beak. And again, he's not fastened on there in any way. He's just placed in that location and he stays balanced. We can replace that with my finger and you'll see that he stays balanced on my finger. So long as the support is lined up with the center of mass, it's balanced. This final one I'd like you to see is a soda bottle inserted into a piece of wood. And I have this designed so that the center of mass of this system lies perfectly in line with the little part of the wood that's actually touching the table. So again, we can see that if we line our center of mass up with the support, we'll be perfectly balanced. If we moved it a little bit too much in this direction, it's going to topple one way and if I move it a little farther this way it's going to topple the other. In this one location the torque clockwise and counterclockwise are perfectly balanced and so is my system.